This video is about creating a sampling distribution again. In our last video, we looked at a problem where the population was very small. This time, we are looking at creating a sampling distribution for questions where a large population is given. Okay, once again, let's look at an example. That's the best way to illustrate what we need to do. Just suppose we know that 35% of all Year 12 students in Victoria study mathematical methods. So in this question, we have a very large population, all Year 12 students in Victoria. This means that the population proportion P is 0.35, and we assume that the value of P remains constant for all selections for the sample. Let us suppose that we select a random sample of four Year 12 students from all Year 12 students in Victoria. First of all, we're going to create a sampling distribution for the sample proportion P hat, which is the number of Year 12 students who study maths methods in my sample. Hence, we're going to find the probability that the, the sample proportion p hat is greater than a quarter. Then we're going to find the probability that the sample proportion p hat is less than three quarters, given that it's greater than one quarter. In this problem, we're dealing with a large population. And we know that 35% of all Year 12 students in Victoria study mathematical methods. If I'm interested in the number of maths method students in my sample, I could select the following. No maths method students, one maths method student, two maths method students, three maths method students, or four maths method students. This means that my sample proportion, P hat, could take on the following values. Zero, one quarter, a half or two quarters, three quarters or one. So let's create the sampling distribution. This is what it would look like. You can see all the values there for the sample proportion, P hat. In the top row, I've just put in x, the number of maths method students in our sample. Now, let's find the probabilities to insert into the table. Now, in our last example, where we had a small population, we used combinations to help us to work out all of the probabilities. When there's a large population, we use our knowledge of binomial distributions to calculate each individual probability in the table. From our work on binomial probability distributions, you'll remember this formula here. The probability that x take, takes any given value is equal to 4cx. The probability of success 0.35 to the power of x and the probability of a failure 0.65 to the power of 4 minus x. This means that each individual probability is worked out this way. The probability that x is equal to 0 is 4c0, 0 0.35 to the power of 0, 0.65 to the power of 4. Here's the probability that x is equal to 1. 4c1 times 0.35 to the power of 1 times 0.65 to the power of 3. Here's the probability that x is equal to 2 x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 4. And all these probabilities can be worked out using binomial PDF on the TI Inspire CAS calculator. We don't need to calculate these probabilities by hand. So using the TI Inspire calculator, as you know, we go to menu, we go to probability, we go to distributions and we go to binomial PDF. When I did this, the probabilities I obtained looked like this. 
and now we can fill in the table. We put each of these probabilities that we found under the relevant value for the sample proportion p hat. So here's the probability that p hat is equal to a half substituted into the table. Okay, now we need to find out the probability that p hat is greater than a quarter. If we look at our table and we look at the values where p hat is greater than a quarter, it's going to be where p hat is equal to one half, p hat is equal to three quarters, and p hat is equal to one. So the probability that p hat is greater than one quarter is equal to the probability that p hat is equal to a half, plus the probability that p hat is equal to three quarters, plus the probability that p hat is equal to one. This is equal to 0 0.3105 plus 0 0.1115 plus 0 0.0150, which is equal to 0 0.4370. Now, let's find the probability that p hat is less than three quarters, given that p hat is greater than one quarter. Using the conditional probability formula, we know that this will be equal to the intersection between p hat being less than three quarters and p hat being greater than one quarter. So, where is p hat both? greater than a quarter and less than three quarters. It's going to be when p hat is between one quarter and three quarters. And this is divided by the probability that p hat is greater than a quarter. Now, if we look at where p hat is between one quarter and three quarters from the table, we see that here's one quarter, here's three quarters, here it is between those two values. So it's going to equal the probability of p hat is equal to a half. And this is divided by the probability that p hat is greater than one quarter. Looking at our table, here is the probability where p hat is equal to a half. And the probability where p hat is greater than one quarter will be 0.3105 plus 0.1115 plus 0 0.0150. And when we add these values together, we get 0.4370. When I divide 0 0.3105 by 0 0.4370, I get 0 0.7105. So this is my final answer. Now I want you to try this example. I want you to pause the video and see if you can do these three problems. Use my example that I just did as a model and see if you can do problems A, B and C. Now let's look at the solution. P hat should take the following values, zero, one quarter, one half, three quarters, and one. Your sampling distribution should look like this. You'll notice that the values for p hat here are in exact values. If you use decimal values, that's okay, but just make sure that your decimal values coincide with these exact values. Did you get it correct? Using the sampling distribution, you needed to find the probability that p hat was greater than 0.5, given that it was greater than zero. And your final answer was 17 over 369. If you've got a decimal value for this, please make sure that your decimal value coincides with this exact value. Based on this tutorial now, I want you to work on exercise 17b and I want you to do questions 5 and 6.
question four with the example you just did. Good luck and thank you for watching.